Welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show, featuring the head coach of Nickel State University Baseball, Seth Thibodeau. Today's program is presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional, dedicated to patient-centered excellence. The Seth Thibodeau Show is also sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. You're either local or you're not. And by People's Health, your Medicare health team. Hello and welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. I'm Mike Wagon. I'm alongside the head coach of the Colonel, Seth Thibodeau. Coach, always good to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Wags. I'm excited about a great week for baseball. Before we look ahead to a great week, let's look back. Five wins in a row. First five-game win streak of the season. Playing your best baseball right now. We are. We're getting there. We, we challenged our guys last week to, to amp it up a notch and make sure we start playing our base, best baseball now. Let's make a push. We didn't have a great March. Let's have a great April, and then we're, we're definitely off to the right start. Meanwhile, you pick up your first season sweep of the year, taking on Incarnate Word this past weekend. Yeah. We'll look at highlights later. The offense coming around, but the pitching, my goodness, do you guys have some great arms. We can pitch it really well, and our guys understand their roles. Coach Pro has done an amazing job with them, but I like the way our defense is coming along. I like us turning the double plays, and we're starting to turn. They're starting to understand each other defensively. That's what's going to win a championship for us. Well, we're going to look at that three-game sweep a little bit later on with a more in-depth look at what could be a historical year for Nichols pitching. Here's Joanna Dukri. After losing the Southland Pitcher of the Year, Taylor Burt, at the end of the season, the Nichols State University pitching staff has not only exceeded expectations, but had three of the most dominant arms in the conference. Right-handers Ryan Deans and Justin Cinebaldi and lefty Grant Barn all entered last weekend in the top four in the Southland Conference in earned run average. In the team's recent sweep over Incarnate Word, the Aces combined to surrender just one earned run between them. This season, we know that our pitch staff is going to be a pretty good one, especially with the returns that we had from last year. And uh, we just wanted to try to do better than what we did last year, so the goal was to come out and compete more. The pitching staff has been superb all season, the office has only recently started to come around. That has left the hurlers in a tight spot, knowing that had little margin for error. It's not too much pressure because we know that once they start kicking, they're going to they're gonna be fine. And uh, as long as we do what we got to do, then uh, we believe that we could bring the wings to the team when it's close and the hitters aren't on their roll. But uh, we're going to need them later down the roll because we know that we're not going to have some good days. The wins and the losses are a team thing. And, and what our goal is as a pitching staff is to try to contribute to us having a chance to win every time we play. And for us to continue to do that and not worry about what the other team is doing, all of those things are outside of our control. And what we can control as a pitching staff is each pitch that we're about to throw. And that is hard to do. Even though Deans is leading the conference in ERA and garnered his first weekend start last Thursday, he knows he can't take his opportunities for granted. You're always going to have something to work on no matter what. And uh, mine is just keep 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 controlling the ball, uh, keep hitting my spots. And uh, that's one of the main things that we work on every day. And, uh, as long as I keep doing that, I think I'll, I'll be fine for the rest of the season. As great as the Colonel starting pitching has been, closer Stuart Holmes has been even better. With 11 saves, an 0-4-6 ERA, and more than one strikeout per inning, Holmes leaves a bullpen that has slammed the door shut on opponents game after game. I think more than anything, I just need to continue being a, a good leader for uh, for everyone else. Um, we all want to be able to push each other and make each other the best we can. The last few games, we've uh, we've played really well. Um, I think the runs are starting to come, and as long as we keep pitching it and throwing strikes and making plays on defense, that everything's going to work out for us. Thank you so much, Joanna. We appreciate it. And, uh, Coach, you mentioned Coach Prothrow. What a great job with the staff. Phenomenal job. He recruited these guys as well, and he, he had a plan for each one of them. And everyone on our staff understands their role and what's expected of them. And when you have that, these guys know what to do every single day. They know the workload that they have every single day. And uh, it's, it's been a pleasure. But Coach Butler's done a phenomenal job with them as well. Coach, the, uh, the pitching, always important. The bats are coming around. We're going to talk more about that. When we come back with highlights of the series sweep against Incarnate Word from this past weekend, stick with us. You're watching the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Region. You may know Thibodeau Regional was the first hospital in the region to take a leadership role in athletic safety. And they responded by developing a comprehensive sports medicine program. 
But did you know their certified athletic trainers assist high schools with team event coverage and that they are the region's only hospital with sports medicine fellowship trained physicians? TJ Boudreaux knows they're here for athletes of all ages. Parents, coaches, and athletes know Thibodeau Regional Medical Center for expert, compassionate care. Donnie, I'm in Rouse's at least three times a week, and I want the best prices every day. Come on, chef. Let's go shop. All right. There's got to be at least a thousand items just on this one aisle. At Rouse's, we stock more groceries than anyone else. I can see that. So what's with the tag? Best price every day. It's the Rouse's guarantee. You're getting our lowest price every day. So when I see this tag, you know you don't have to wait for a sale. I can shop any day. And get our best price every day. Rouse's. You're either local or you're not. Well, we're all about the people that we care for. At People's Health, we know that when it comes to health, what works is teamwork. Each People's Health Plan member has a team of talented professionals working together to coordinate care so our members can do what they love to do. That's what we do. We're here for you with People's Health. People's Health, your Medicare health team. Welcome back to the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. Mike Wagenheim with head coach Seth Thibodeau. You've been waiting for a sweep all year long, coach. You finally get it and uh, just rolling right now, five wins in a row. I, I think you needed a week like you just had. Oh, for sure. We needed that to get to get our minds right and get our championship mindset going. And Our young guys needed that. They needed a taste of what, what we did last week. They needed to know that they can do it. And so uh, the challenge is to continue on with it, though. We've got a big week ahead of us on the road. So, again, Let's continue what we're doing. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Folks, Thursday was Autism Awareness Day, and a big Colonel fan, Peyton Anselmi, was there to throw out the first pitch. Peyton and his family very involved in autism-related causes. So great moment there before the game. This is a series opener Thursday night against Incarnate Word. Right-hander Ryan Deems got his first conference start of the year, and deservingly so. He entered the weekend with a league-best ERA of 0 0.97. He'd give up an earned run right off the bat, though. Ethan McGill with a two-out RBI single in the first, driving in Jesse Hoover, who reached on a walk. Deems allows two hits in the first. He, though, would only give up three more the rest of the night. Meanwhile, as we mentioned, the bats would give him some support. Facing right-hander Gino Encina, the Colonels string together three consecutive one-out hits in the second, the last of them coming on the double down the left field line by Christian Correa. Eagle Wesney crosses with a tying run. Correa had a two-for-three day at the plate. The Colonels should have scored on a David Zorn flyout, but didn't. However, Joey Morales bounces one up the middle, driving in Gavin Webby. The error by center fielder Mark Whitehead allows Correa to score as well. Colonels up three to one here. In Cena, he didn't get much help from his defense. In the third, Kyle Reese belted a double and moved to third on a ground out before Wesney's dribbler to short is airmailed by Austin Hoffman. That makes it four to one. And Cena went seven innings, allowing four runs, two earned on six hits with no walks and five strikeouts. Deems, meanwhile, masterful in the middle innings. In the sixth, he yielded a leadoff double, but escapes with a strikeout of McGill. Deems fans seven on the evening. After the first inning, no Cardinal reached third base against him. The strikeout of Blake Woosley to end the seventh. Deems, though, ran into trouble in the eighth. UIW loads the bases on a one-out double and a pair of hit batters. So on comes Stuart Holmes, who started the weekend with nine saves and an 0-5-4 ERA. He lives for these types of spots. First, a strikeout of McGill for out number two. Then Brands Kale steps to the plate, goes after the high heat. UIW leaves the bases loaded. The book closed on Dean, seven in the third innings, one run, five hits. In the ninth, Holmes surrendered a leadoff single, then got back to work. Down goes Colton Bissett. The next victim is Woosley, two away. It's up to pinch hitter Braden Martin to keep it going. No chance. Holmes fans aside, five Ks in an inning and two thirds. Nichols wins four to one, their first Southland Series opening win of the year. Coach, it's been frustrating getting off to a lousy start each weekend and having to dig yourselves out of a hole. It's a completely different scenario when you can pick up that win in game one. No idea. It's uh, Ryan Deems takes the baseball and competes like a Friday night guy. I was a little tired because of the role he's been playing, but he led us to victory there. We had some hits when we needed to from some upperclassmen. We saw the guys that have been in that fight before and that Friday night winning mindset before. They delivered for us on, on, on this past game one of the series. And so that 
is what carries on to the next guys to, or to the guys that are new into the program, the guys that weren't here last year. Now they understand what you, what you have to do in such a, a perfect night to be successful in that game one of the series. you got to love Ryan Dean's approach to, to just the everyday uh, baseball mentality. He can't get enough of it. He can't get enough of his team. He can't get enough of Nickel State University. He just he lives for the moment. He lives every single day like it's it's the greatest day in the world, and he's so appreciative to play for this program. Well, back to the did for game two on Saturday. The Colonels using their speed to do damage against Southpaw Garrett Cooper. Justin Holt leading off the first inning with a bunt base hit, perfectly placed, making first baseman Ethan McGill handle it. No one to throw to, so Holt is on board to start the inning. Then it's Darius Knight's turn. He's looking to sacrifice Holt over, but he's able to leg it out. The Colonels are primed here for a big inning. Now, unfortunately, Kyle Reese grounded into a double play, and it looked like the side would be retired here, but Bryce Shepard Throws away Tanner Vanderveer's grounder. Holt scores from third. Colonels up one to nothing. By the way, Nichols had only one error all weekend. Into the second, Holt comes through with a two-out hit as Nichols pieced together three singles. This grounder up the middle chases in Alex Tucker. It's two to nothing in favor of the Colonels. Grant Bourne got the starting assignment for Nichols in the third. He's in trouble with the bases loaded and no outs, but he gets Braden Martin to hit into a 1-2-3 double play. UIW would score on that aforementioned lone error later in the inning to make it 2-1, but the damage is limited. In the fourth, more solid defense. This time it's Joey Morales robbing Ethan McGill with a leaping grab. Seems like Joey has a highlight every game out at shortstop. Home half of the fifth. Big two out hits keep coming. Reese doubled to keep the inning going before Vanderveer doubles just inside at third base and down the line. Tanner Vanderveer two for four with a pair of extra base hits. Next batter is Alex Shermer. Got this one to drop in left. Shermer had a nice afternoon too. Vanderveer scores here and it's four to one. Nichols, Colonels finish the day with 11 hits. Born walks seven, but he allowed just three hits and struck out a half dozen, including the final batter he faced, Bryce Shepard. So Jason McDonald comes on after Bourne. He would fare a, a fan a pair in the top of the seventh before Shermer RBI double made it 5-1. Robbie Petty took over in the eighth, and he fans his side in order. Devastating breaking ball there. Nichols adds another insurance run as Justin Holt registers his third hit, singling through the right side off of Adam Hunter. Morales coming around. The throw is high. It's 6-1. Nichols, fourth consecutive Colonel win, first time since opening week. UIW drew eight walks, but Nichols, Turn three double plays. Coach, you can tell from that game it's all starting to come it's together. starting to come together, making plays. Two out hits were phenomenal. The base running was outstanding. It was just a lot of fun. It was, it was a faceless opponent for us that night. Our guys really focused on, on playing our style of baseball. Boy, it was good to see us you know, pitch it that way, play defense the way we did. You know, we walked a couple of guys that were just very unorthodox of our staff, but that's going to happen over the course of a long season. Uh, but the two out hits was definitely the name of the game, no question. Yeah, Joanna talked to the staff earlier about always pitching with a razor edge margin for error yeah. because the offense just wasn't coming around. They can supply six runs on 11 sure. hits or anything yeah. close to that. Bourne didn't have his best stuff, yeah, but, but he managed. Still down there. Still dominant because we had runs there, because we played defense there, because we were in complete control of the baseball game. So that uh, clinched the series for you. You got that one under your belt. You throw Justin Cinebaldi on Saturday. That guy could be an ace for any sure. team in this league. He's a number one on, on almost every team in our league, no question. He's a good arm. He's been there for us all year. He sets the tempo. He sets the stage for you right away. And, and we knew, <laughs> our players knew when they got to the clubhouse on, on Saturday morning that, that they, these guys were going for a school. Yeah, it's a great feeling. The reigning Southland pitcher of the week, in fact, Justin Cinebaldi, taking the ball on Saturday, fresh off a complete game shutout of southeastern Louisiana. He picked up right where he left off. He issues a one-out walk here in the first, but Cinebaldi just so good all day long. He induces Jesse Hoover into a 6-4-3 double play. Morales to Vanderveer to Zorn. The defense solid again in this one. UIW throwing righty Brandon Anderson. He retired the first five batters, then gave up a double to Seth Stevens, followed by this bomb off the bat of Christian Correa. He mashed it. Second home run of the year for the Colonel catcher. Congratulations there from Coach Tim Nichols up by a score of two to nothing. And Correa got it done with his arm too. Mark Whitehead led off his six with a walk, but Correa catches him off guard at first. Cinebaldi, for his part, went six in the third shutout innings, yielding four hits with three walks and five strikeouts. Bottom six, Vanderveer on third with one gone, and he hits this one to the deepest part of the park. 
a wall banging RBI triple for Alex Shermer in the series. Shermer went four for eight with a double, a triple, three RBIs. Nichols would add a Gavin Webby RBI single in the seventh to go up 4 0, but UIW wasn't going away. In the eighth, Hoover triples down the right field line off of Mark Frazier. That scored Matt Morris from first base and broke up his shutout in the process. Two batters later, closer Stuart Holmes enters, and Ethan McGill pokes this pitch into left, plating McGill from third. The lead is cut in half. It's 4 2. The Cardinals cracked the door open, but Holmes would not let them walk through. He fans Brant's kale here to end the eighth, and after walking the leadoff man in the ninth, Holmes was lights out. The first victim is Frey Rodriguez. He goes down looking, and then it's pinch hitter Braden Martin. See ya. After that, Blake Woosley. It didn't matter who Incarnate Word sent up there. Ball game. 4-2 Nichols. Holmes with his 11th save as a Colonel sweep the series for the first time since the conclusion of the 2014 regular season. Incarnate Word was knocking on the door. <laughs> Once you put Holmes out there, it's done. He'll shut him down. Incarnate Word is a very, very improved baseball team. You know, the guy that beat us last year threw against us when we got to him a little bit on Thursday night. We saw a lot of their bullpen. It was They just had some good arms coming out of there. So it took a lot from our guys to, to win that series. And a very deserving sweep. Our, our guys worked really hard for that. I told them the other day it had been 330 days since we got to wear our sweep uniforms. And so we were able to wear them and uh, certainly deserving of it. But a lot of fun. Our guys took care of business. I'm proud of them. It wasn't just two or three or four guys up and down no, the order sure. that whole series. Absolutely. You know, Vanderveer Veer had his time. Shermer had his time. Stevens had his time. Correa had his time. Holt had his day. You know, Webby had a big hit for us. We stole some bases, made some plays defensively. Just a really good overall team sweep for us. But, again, you dug yourself a little bit of a hole early in the season, so mm -hmm. now you got to climb the ladder again. Yeah. You, you, you got used to that the first couple of years. Last year, you played from out in front and yeah. tried to have to That's hold right. off other teams. This year, though, it seemed like you guys had a target on your back. I think we have a little target on our back. I think people understand who we are, and that's outstanding. That's what we want. There's expectation. But I think when you are climbing, when you, when you are trying to, to fight to get in, to fight to do what you want, then you usually end up in the postseason a hot and hungry baseball team. And you feel like there's there hasn't been anything accomplished yet, and you're still fighting for something. So I like that feeling. I like where we're at right now. And, and I certainly hope we can continue to do what we're doing. We take a look at the South and standings through this past weekend. Southeastern Louisiana took two and three from Northwestern State to hold on to first place. McNeese State swept New Orleans. Nichols is now within three games of the Lions. Stephen F. Austin would be the last team to qualify for the league tournament if the season ended today. Coach, three games out with a half conference season to go. It's there. It's absolutely there. We just need to continue to take care of our business. We're going to have to win some games on the road, which that's normal for you to win championships. But, man, I... It's fun to be where we're at right now, and our guys understand that. And I heard a senior say the other night in our in our in our meeting, guys, it's not about a sweep; it's about a championship. And every game you play and win is important. And so our guys are saying winning things, uh, they're talking winning things, whether it be in the clubhouse, the cages, the dugout. I hear things I haven't heard all year, and I like that a lot. They're coming into their own, and and we still have tons of work to do and great teams to play. But we're excited about it. We're going to talk more about what's to come in just a moment. First, we got to take a time out. A lot more on the way, so don't you go anywhere. This is the Seth Thibodeau Show, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional.
coming back here with you on the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. Coach, big week coming up on the road here, including a three-game set with Central Arkansas. This coming weekend, one of the longer road trips of the year. You're gone all of spring break, so a chance to really focus on baseball and nothing else this yeah, week. Yeah, absolutely. There's, you know, I, I would prefer to be on the road than at home during spring break, and we're excited about this challenge. What specifically uh, do you look for in the Central Arkansas series? Well, you know, that's always a battle. They're so well coached. They're a tough team. It doesn't matter if they're talented or not. They always play a really good style of baseball. I have the utmost respect for their staff there and what they've done. We can't walk anyone. We can't give any freebies up on the road. We've got to make sure we're the, we're the aggressor there because it's a tough place to win. But I am, I'm very excited about this challenge. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about that coming up in just a moment. Folks, first, there are some special things happening with the Colonel tennis teams right now. With a look, here's Beatrice Beard. The Nicholas Lemons tennis team got off to a hot start that continued into conference play. While it's at the men's team, time to get things going. On Friday, both squads faced Abilene Christian at home in Thibodeau and kept their remarkable runs going. While in the midst of one of the best seasons in program history, the Colonel women came up short in doubles against the Wildcats, but the team fought through and singles picked up the slack as Nichols would go on to win 4-3. Sophomore Stephanie Barnett has been the face of consistency and for the Colonels. She believes that the best is yet to come for her club. We've had a really good semester so far and I think it's only going to get better for us because all the girls are staying disciplined and um, I guess sticking to what they have to do. Everyone's got things to work on and the girls are all getting it done. The women's team has been a dominant force in the Southland, going 7-1 and one in league play with a 15-4 and four mark overall while it has taken time for the men to get going. They would also find themselves in good position at home, defeating the Wildcats 4-2 to two, to even their record at 2-2 two and two in conference and 8-8 eight and eight overall. Sophomore Kieran Cronin credits their work ethic for the team's recent success. We've been working hard in training the last couple of weeks. Um, we've, we've trained a lot. Like uh, We found how to win like the first, first two or three matches. I think we were slow to you know, get enough to start. But now, like, we know how to win. Like, we don't have to trust our teammates. Like, we can concentrate on ourselves now. Whereas before, we would always be looking at our teammates' courts, see how they were doing. But now, um, I think, I think we all, we've all got the message. We know, we know what we need to do to win. The men's team is getting hot at the right time with the conference championship around the corner. Head coach Manachi Sundaram knows the team still has room for improvement. So, we're still a work in progress. We're still not where we need to be. Both teams, uh, we still have a long way to go to go to conference and be convincing there. So we're working on it. Thank you so much, Beatrice. We appreciate it, Coach. You, you got to love Coach Minoxi. In fact, he even asked you for a new ball cap. He said his head's getting so big from all this winning he's doing. Coach Minoxi has done a phenomenal job for us. He is, is he definitely an interesting character, but boy, he wins. And what can you say? What can you say? <laughs> just, they just keep on winning. That's all that matters. That's Folks, right. we got you covered this weekend as the Colonels visit Central Arkansas. Listen to Friday night's game on KNSU 91.5 FM. Then on Saturday and Sunday, KTIB 640 AM will carry the broadcast. Coach, uh, up until this past weekend, you really seemed to play better on the road than at home. We did. I, I think our guys are relaxed on the road. And we challenged our guys before the season to, to understand the importance of of winning on the road, how do you win on the road? No one has a home field advantage in our mind. We are in control there. We take care of business and enjoy it. We've had some nice wins on the road. We'd like to go win a series on the road. It's important, but we, we know we're going to have to play a whole lot better uh, and, and make to make sure we win that first game of the series, which is critical on the road. And, uh, we're going to we're gonna do everything we can to do, but we've played well on the road for sure. Was there a difference during this five-game win streak in, in your approach at the plate as a team? Yeah, I think that, that uh, a couple of weeks ago we've started to talk about, you know, some things and, and reintroduce some things, and I, I felt like our guys started to understand, and there was a sense of urgency there. There was a sense of urgency in their work ethic, and, and it's definitely paid off, and, and, and it's good to see, and I think we're going to continue to rise offensively. Well, the Colonels only have a couple of home games over the next few weeks, but you can keep up with them on our social media sites. Find us at Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. Folks, we got to take our final break here on the Seth Thibodeau Show, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. Come back and wrap it all up in just a moment. 
Our journey to patient-centered excellence is fueled by strong leadership and driven by a passionate team working together to deliver the highest quality, safest care, constantly adding more services, physicians, and technology, ensuring you have an outstanding patient experience. As a result, thousands have made us the most preferred hospital. Patient-centered excellence. At Thibodeau Regional, it's not a destination. It's a journey driven by one purpose, you. Donnie, I'm in Rouse's at least three times a week, and I want the best prices every day. Come on, Chef. Let's go shop. All right. There's got to be at least a thousand items just on this one aisle. At Rouse's, we stock more groceries than anyone else. I can see that. So what's with the tag? Best price every day. It's the Rouse's guarantee. You're getting our lowest price every day. So when I see this tag, you know you don't have to wait for a sale. I can shop any day. And get our best price every day. Rouse's. You're either local or you're not. Well, we're all about the people that we care for. At People's Health, we know that when it comes to health, what works is teamwork. Each People's Health plan member has a team of talented professionals working together to coordinate care so our members can do what they love to do. That's what we do. We're here for you with People's Health. People's Health, your Medicare health team. Back with you, closing out the Seth Thibodeau Show, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. Mike Wagg and I'm with head coach Seth Thibodeau. Coach, after the Central Arkansas Series this weekend in Conway, you have a rare off weekend. I don't recall the last time that's happened during the season. You can go lay it all out on the line this week. Sure, week. we can lay it out all week long. We're going to play it out and, and use that off weekend to our benefit, and rest some arms, rest some bodies, and, and make that stretch run right after. Coach, not only do you guys have five-game win streak and tennis is winning and softball is winning, it's time to announce our Rouse's Student Athlete of the Week, folks. You're either local or you're not. Louisiana's best can be found at your local Rouse's or at Rouse's.com. Not only are those teams winning, senior golfer Andre Bjornsson, who on Sunday sank a 25-foot birdie on the second hole in a sudden-death playoff, claimed his first career individual title in the Red Wolves Intercollegiate in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Bjornsson finished with a three-round score up 212. Coach, just great things going on all around right that's now. That's great to see. Congrats to Andre. That, that's a tough, that is a, the, what you work hard for, that tight moment, and man, for him to deliver like that. Congrats to him and Coach Schilling. What a great ending right there. But, uh, lots of great things going on on campus, and it's, it's that time of the year for us to all start heating up. We're going to talk to you next week again, Coach. Thanks so much. Thanks, Wag. He's head coach Seth Thibodeau. I'm Mike Wagenheim. Keep up with us online, and we'll talk to you again next week right here on the Seth Thibodeau Show. Today's show has been presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional, dedicated to patient-centered excellence. This program has also been sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. You're either local or you're not. And People's Health, your Medicare health team. This has been a presentation of the Colonel Sports Network. <laughs>